look at number 20. We've got it in factored form. Uh, that is as far as it will factor. So if we set our factors equal to zero to solve, we get negative 2 over 5 as one of our solutions. How many solutions are we supposed to have? Three. So that's one of them. Our other two come from the quadratic there. Now, I told you the other day when we did this, it's not factorable anymore. We cannot factor that. It doesn't go any further. So what do we do with quadratics to solve them when we can't factor? What are some options? Hmm? Quadratic formula. What's another option? Graphing. You can graph any equation to solve it. We've been talking about it. We've connected the solutions to the x-intercepts. Now, we're not going to graph it because when we graph it, we get a decimal. I want the exact answer, so we are going to use the quadratic formula, but I just wanted to bring up the fact that you can graph any equation to solve it. Now, in case you have forgotten what your quadratic formula is, you probably need to write it down on your paper. X equals negative B, so that means we change the sign of B, plus or minus. Keep going, Carly, because I ain't singing it. Thank you. Sorry, y'all don't want to hear me sing it, so I'm not going to sing it. But um, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. So some of you, this might be a really good idea. Before you start using the quadratic formula, you need to come over here and identify what a, b, and c are before you start trying to use that formula. So in this problem, a is the coefficient on x squared, so it's 25. B is the coefficient on X, so it's negative 10, and C is the constant on the end, so it's positive 4. Your signs most absolutely matter. All right, so X equals, we change the sign of B, so it's positive 10 plus or minus the square root B squared, make sure you put it in parentheses, especially if it's negative, minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times a. So, I'm going to type in everything that's under the square root. I'm just not going to put the square root over it. Now, to save myself some trouble, I'm not going to put negative 10 squared because negative 10 squared is the same thing as positive 10 squared. I'm just saving myself from having to put parentheses in there. So we get negative 300 under our square root. Now we got to simplify. First things first, there's a negative under that square root. So that comes out as I. 300, perfect square, 100 times 3. So, the square root of 100 is 10. That goes in front of the I there. 3 is not a perfect square, so it stays under the root. When I get to this point, I look at all three of my coefficients and ask myself, are they all divisible by the same number? Yes, they're all divisible by 10, so I'm going to divide all three of those numbers by 10. So I get 1. You need the 1 there, okay? 10 divided by 10 is 1. Plus or minus i. You don't need the 1 there because you got the i. And then 50 divided by 10 is 5. So this produces your other two answers. We had 1. We needed 2 more. We've got 1 plus i squared root of 3 divided by 5 and 1 minus 
I square root of 3 divided by 5. Now you got to be kind of careful with this. If you're checking this one, you need to put that numerator in parentheses. If you're going to check this, well, not if you're going to check this, when you check it, you need to put the numerator in parentheses and then 125x cubed plus 8. You get 0. Okay? If you don't get 0 before you assume that you did something wrong in your problem, check and make sure you didn't do something wrong in putting in the answer that you plugged in. Then go back and look at your problem and see if you found a mistake. All right. I want to make sure we've got this. So I'm going to do two more with you. And then I'll turn you loose on it. Okay. We have x cubed minus 64 is equal to 0. So it factored into x minus 4 and x squared plus 4x plus 16. So the first part, really easy, right? x equals positive 4. If we plug that in, 4 cubed is 64, 64 minus 4, 64 is 0. All right. Other part, it is an unfactorable quadratic. So we have to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times what's a? 1 times c all over 2 times a. Let's start simplifying. Let's see here. We've got 16 minus 4 times 16. So that's negative 48. Guess what? These are always going to be imaginary. So we had a negative under the square root. Take out the i first. 48 is divisible by 16. It is 16 times 3. 16 is our perfect square in this case. So the square root of 16 is 4. The 4 goes after the plus and minus before the i. 3 is not a perfect square, so it stays under the root. Divided by 2. Our coefficients are all divisible by 2, so we do that. We get negative 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3. You don't need to divide by 1 on the bottom. Dividing by 1 does not change your number. Questions? Okay. Last one before I turn y'all loose to just do a bunch of these. 23. 2m cubed plus 16 is equal to 0. So we've got it factored. We've got 2. Cannot equal 0, so we mark it out. m plus 2 is equal to 0, so m equals negative 2. M squared minus 2m plus 4 is equal to 0. Quadratic formula time. B is negative 2, so negative B is positive 2. Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. So we have 4 minus 16, so that's negative 12 under our square root. It was a negative, so I immediately bring out the i. 12 is 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2. All three numbers, I'm going to emphasize that again, all three numbers. It can't just be the first, the one on the top in front and the one on the bottom. Okay, it has to be, all those have to be divisible by the same thing. So when we divide all those by 2, we get 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. 
I mentioned that you could always use graphing uh, as a way to solve, but we can't, you have to use the quadratic formula here. Why? Because they're imaginary. The imaginary means it doesn't cross the x-axis. That doesn't cross the x-axis, so we can't find the x-intercepts, which are the solutions, which are the zeros, all those things that are synonyms. So you have to use the quadratic formula in order to find these other two solutions to these perfect cube, uh, um, perfect cube polynomials. There we go. That's where it was.